my dudes what is happening man today we're going to be looking at the deco 3 by xp pen now i did cover the artist 12 display in a different video if you want to check that out i've got the review up on my channel here so what we're going to do first is we're going to do a quick unboxing if you want to skip the unboxing and just get to the test drive and the specs and the software and all that you can jump ahead to about three and a half minutes of this video uh, but so when you first open the box uh, i did open this before because i'd been using it for a good chunk of time but I wanted to show you what you get in the box this is the tablet itself it's actually pretty lightweight it's got a rotating ring so you can set that to uh, your brush size or canvas zoom and things like that it uses a USB-C uh, port and it has rubber pads on the on the the bottom so it'll stick to a surface and i did want to mention it does have a wireless feature if you don't want to have it plugged in now your pen and nibs are going to come in one of these cool cylinders i love the way xp pen packages their content it's like you get to take that cylinder with you the pen feels comparable to any other pen tablet uh, pen device it doesn't require a battery or anything like that they have a lot of extra nibs uh, in this cylinder case it's kind of hidden but if you unscrew that cap you're also going to find the usb dongle so what this is is basically it allows you to connect to your xp pen deco 3 wirelessly but you have to plug in that usb dongle and if you have a mac a new macbook you're going to have to have one of those usb c to usb converter things uh, what else we got in here we got our warranty policy let's bust this open real fast if you've never used a tablet before it does have a guide that'll walk you through the setup process and how to download the software it doesn't come with any software discs you go to their website download the drivers and bing bang and a boom it also comes with one of these super pro slick little silky soft gloves oh baby i feel like a real pro now i ain't gonna be smudging my deco mm -mm. all right all right but let's talk about the important stuff let's talk about the deco 3 first of all it's very lightweight it's very compact and sleek uh, just for a size comparison, because what I usually use is a Wacom and Tuos Pro. That's the medium size. And I wanted to compare them directly. And the first thing I noticed is it's just a little bit lighter weight than the, the Wacom and Tuos Pro. It's thinner, uh, which I also like. My Intuos Pro is a little bit heavier. The Deco 3 is lightweight. It's got a very flat surface. It's not shiny. And so it's got a little bit more of a texture to it. And also uh, it's got a bigger drawing size, I guess you'd say, which is probably more suitable for the widescreen 16.9 resolution dimensions if you're using a standard widescreen display. Overall, it's a sleek, portable design that really is nice for, especially with the wireless feature, it's gonna be really nice for taking out to like a cafe or something like that. And dude, I can't wait to give this thing a test drive. Let's jump into the software side next. All right, before we jump into doing any artwork, uh, with this new tablet. We're gonna check out some of the features. So I opened up, I downloaded the, the software, I installed it. Uh, this of course adjusts your pen pressure. So if you like it to be a little bit more firm, which I, I tend to do, then you probably want something that's a little bit more like this setting. And you can see the difference though, that is a bit of a jump in the pressure sensitivity. And I have noticed that the nib is a little bit springy I guess you'd say, and I really wish that they would include just more variety of different types of nibs. Some that are more slick across the surface and some with a little less spring maybe to them would have been nice. All of the other nibs that are included are exactly the same. The software does pretty much come with what you'd expect from a pen tablet. You can adjust the pressure sensitivity if you want it to be hard, go up to the top left. If you want it to be a softer, longer range, which I actually recommend, uh, or right down the middle uh, for this particular pen because uh, if you go too firm, your lines end up too jumpy. Uh, it jumps a little too quickly between zero pressure and full pressure, you know what I'm saying? But if you set it to be softer down to the bottom right, uh, then you get a little bit more of that broad range of brush stroke and you can uh, it's just more preference thing and you might find that a certain style suits you a little bit more but i would highly recommend that you develop the comfortability uh, even if it seems awkward develop that comfortability uh, with it being a little bit softer for this particular pen I don't want to spend a ton of time. This isn't a guide to how to do your settings in the XP Pen uh, uh, software, 
but you can adjust if you have a dual monitor you can set it to only draw across one monitor or across two you can change the uh, area that you can actually draw in I do recommend there is an issue with this uh, where I'm gonna suggest that you actually shrink this a little bit so that you can move the cursor to the edge of your screen I had some issues with that because I'm on a Mac you have to move the cursor all the way to the bottom of the screen to pull up your other apps and things like that like you see me do there and, uh, and sometimes it gets a little stuck. It doesn't go all the way to the edge of the screen. So I do suggest maybe making the, the draw area a little bit smaller. You can also set the, uh, the ring to be uh, brush size. You can adjust your brush size or your zoom on your canvas. You can set these quick keys to do just about anything from saving your document to creating a transform tool. Uh, to creating macros. Uh, you can program them to do whatever you want very easily using the software. It's actually very intuitive and uh, pretty much industry standard and it seems to work pretty well. Pretty standard Flare XP pen. They showed up to the party and they were appropriately dressed. This is pretty much the standard features. They're not breaking any molds. They're not inventing anything new or showing us anything that we don't have in any other pen tablet here, but it gets the job done and it gets it done well. All right, so let's jump into the test drive. Uh, I started it out in Photoshop and I will cover Sketchbook Pro later on in the video as well, but for now let's just discuss how it performs in Photoshop. Now it's been confirmed to me by XP Pen that Adobe does officially support XP Pen devices and drivers. So there was no conflict with that. Although I did have issues with it conflicting with my Wacom drivers. And I'll discuss that a little bit more later in the video. So as for using the XP Pen Deco 3 with Photoshop, it pretty much worked as expected. Uh, the buttons on the pen pulled up my brushes when I needed them. The quick keys and the spinner tool on the on the device itself worked really well for changing my brush size and pretty much no problems. I think it was designed to work with Photoshop. Uh, initially, I did find that the surface was a little bit more grainy and that might just be because it's brand spanking new. Uh, so one of the things that I got pretty used to was this very like glossy, sleek kind of uh, uh, surface that I had on my other older tablet. It might just be that I had used that that tablet so much that I had worn it down and it just became slick or the nib had like smoothed out, you know what I'm saying? But using this feels like, uh, the best way I can describe it is that it almost feels like you're drawing on paper, um, aside from it being off to the side, which I'll discuss in a moment. Uh, but the the grain, I guess you'd say, of the paper, of the surface of the tablet, it, some tablets are buttery smooth like you're drawing on glass. This ain't one of them. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? The response time is fine. It just feels like it's got a little bit of tooth. That's all. And some people might like that. Some people won't. So drawing off to the side, yes, this is this is not a uh, XP Pen uh, Artist 12 series or something like that. This is a tablet that you hook up off to the side of your of your computer or your MacBook. For me, in my case, I'm using a MacBook Pro. Uh, I've I've popped up a video here so you can see my setup. I do it this way because I like to use the quick keys on the keyboard. And it's also just better for my posture. I don't like to hunch over a display screen and my hand gets hot and sweaty. So um, maybe it's because I don't use them fancy gloves. You know what I'm saying? But I just uh, tend to prefer this, this particular kind of a setup. And it also, my hand doesn't get in the way of the drawing. So I'm just seeing what I want to, like I'm seeing the whole image uh, on the whole display. It's also great if you're traveling or you're going out to a cafe. You don't have just a bunch of wires, you know, spread out across the, the table or anything like that. In fact, you're seeing a couple of wires. One of those wires plugged into my MacBook is my microphone. The other is the USB-C cable that connects to the Deco 3. But if you feel like you're strangling yourself in a sea of wires all over the place connecting to your computer and whatnot, you could just plug in that wireless dongle and just uh, liberate yourself from your desk and draw from across the room. Actually, I don't know about that. I didn't test the distance or the range. I set pretty much about you know two or three feet, no more than two or three feet away from my MacBook when I used the wireless feature. And there was no lag in it at all. I mean, it was as if it was plugged in. 
So I had to wonder, because this is about $250 cheaper than its uh, Wacom competitor, the Intuos Pro Medium. So what are you sacrificing for that $250? Well, it's, that's a really good question. One, you're sacrificing the Bluetooth. The wireless with the dongle that this XP Pen Deco 3 offers is secure and it's stable and it's reliable, but it's, it's not a Bluetooth thing. You still have to plug into uh, that dongle to get the wireless signal and it doesn't always connect immediately. I had a couple of incidents where I had to restart my computer a couple of times because it just wasn't connecting. Again though, that had something to do, in, in hindsight I found out that it had something to do with conflicting of drivers with my uh, Wacom and Veik drivers. The other factor is probably the display screen. You have to fidget with the settings a little bit to make sure that the drawing space on the tablet goes all the way to the bottom edges of your screen. Uh, if you have menus or something like that or that are gonna pop up that you need to access, like I switch between programs. So I need to be able to, you know, just use my my tablet device to reach the mouse down to the bottom of the screen and pull up my Mac menus and pull up the app that I want to use. I know that a lot of you guys like to use Sketchbook Pro, and I do too. And uh, you'll see it in a lot of my videos. I've done so many tutorials in Sketchbook Pro because they had sponsored me for a while. So I, I know it's really important that this works with all of these other softwares. And unfortunately, I don't use Krita or any of those other uh, software programs, just Sketchbook Pro and Photoshop. And I can say that uh, I had no problems with Sketchbook Pro. In fact, I felt like it ran maybe more effectively in Sketchbook Pro than even Photoshop. And what I mean by that is the springiness in the pen can actually lend itself very well to something that if you're using like more of a paintbrush type of a uh, textured or pressure sensitive brush. Now I'm not sure if uh, Autodesk started supporting the XP pen or if it just naturally works this way, but damn, this is a sexy combination, man. Sketchbook Pro is free, so uh, you could you could get to doing digital art very inexpensively with this combination. I should also mention that I did find the ring uh, on the side of the device to be very helpful with zooming or changing brush size, and it kind of hangs off of the side, so it's really uh, effective in its design. The quality of the plastic does not seem cheap either, which I think is the big surprise with XP Pen, and they've consistently surprised me. So who is this tablet for? I mean, if you're uh, a hobbyist or a beginner and you've never really had a tablet before and you're kind of thinking, well, eh, I'm not gonna make money off of this. I just wanna dabble with it on weekends or in the evenings or something like that. You know, $100 probably does seem like a little steep, you know? Maybe consider an even cheaper tablet. But if you're looking at maybe like, yeah, maybe I do wanna do more high level digital art. Now you can do that with those other devices, but this one has a lot more of those cool features like your wireless feature and like the reliable software uh, that has a full suite of features that you expect from a digital tablet. And last I checked, I mean, these, these were rolling out at 100 bucks on Amazon in the US anyway. And that's a pretty good price if you're not quite ready to go pro. Like, that's why I say this is almost like more for those people who do want to kind of get a little bit more serious about it, you know? But it ain't like you've got loads of disposable cash. Maybe you're looking to take commissions on your Deviant Art channel at some point in the next few months or something like that. Like, if you're ready to start investing money in your art, this is a good one. To give you an idea, Wacom's comparable Intuos Pro Medium is like $350. And it doesn't have that many more features aside from the Bluetooth and a little bit more of a firm pen. Let's pose a few hypotheticals whilst I draw my cool mech samurai kid. Uh, if let's say that you have a Intuos Pro Medium and it broke because the USB cords uh, do break from time to time. And uh, yeah, I am reading your mail. Ha ha. Because I know that happened to me. And I was like, oh man, this sucks. I got to buy a new Wacom. And then you start looking at reviews for other tablets and you're looking at the Vex, and you're looking at the, and by the way, I've reviewed about eight of these tablets in the last couple of years. So I know my stuff when it comes to this and I've checked out the uh, Gaumans and I've checked out the um, Hueyons and all the uh, other comparable, uh, less expensive devices. And this one comes in at the top of all of those. I mean, there are moments when I was drawing with this when I didn't even realize, I for completely forgot that I was working with a tablet that wasn't my usual Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. 
but that came with some headaches. I mean, I had to write to them because I was like, hey, the drivers aren't working at one point and I couldn't get it to connect. They were like, oh, yeah, we have a conflict with Wacom drivers. So make sure you uninstall Wacom drivers. And not only that, I had to uninstall Vaic drivers and Gaumon drivers. I had to make sure no other tablet drivers were installed in order to get it to function properly. But once it did, it functioned completely as expected. Aside from not having some variables in the pressure sensitivity of the nubs and the type of surface that I was drawing on, I kind of just lost myself in the painting, which is a good sign. I mean, that's a sign when your tools aren't in the way, that's a good sign. I will need to wear in that surface though, and I do want a little bit of a softer or glassier surface, but to save like 200 bones? Oh man, uh, that's a that's a savings I could get used to. It also, I mean, it has the the wireless feature, so it's not like you're really sacrificing much. I can't, in fact, I cannot even really list more than maybe two or three features that the Intuos Pro has that this does not have, but they are different technology. And that means that there's a little bit of something you're gonna have to get used to if you're used to using a different tablet. If you're coming from a Vaic or a Huion, this is gonna feel weird. If you're coming from a Wacom, this is gonna feel weird, perhaps even uncomfortable. But after a while, you almost start to like it. So if you've never used an XP pen, uh, or if you've never used any kind of drawing tablet, but you wanna do digital art, this is your entry point. This is the best one that I think you can get. Knowing very well there are cheaper options, but this one is going to have most of the current standard features. And it could take you into the professional realm. If you are a pro and you're used to using a Wacom, I would even con I would say you should consider doing something like this, this tablet. If you're like freelance or something like that, don't write off XP pen, man. They do some, they make some good quality tablets. And if you watch my artist 12 review, you'll notice I'm kind of, I pretty much say the same thing. I mean, you know, XP pen does really good quality products here at a very reasonable price. And I'm so glad that they're around 10 years ago, you know, Wacom had no competition and now we have a lot of, they have a lot of competition, but I feel like XP pen is kind of holding up the strongest end of that, you know, for the consumer. And if I needed a new tablet, but I don't have money, I would I would get the Deco 3 and I would just make myself get used to the different pressure range uh, from what I was used to with my other device. If you're like a student or you're a freelancer and like I said, if you're serious about making money doing art, uh, digital art, this one is a strong buy. If you're a parent and your kid wants to, to maybe kind of do some art, but he doesn't tend to stick with it or she doesn't tend to like stick with things and you're not sure if they're going to stick with it, there are cheaper options. You could go with those. Uh, but the this would be a good one to graduate them to when it seems like it's sticking. Like They're going to be using this a lot. I'd really love to hear from other artists who've maybe switched from a Vaic or a Huion or even a Wacom to XP Pen, you know. I'm actually considering doing the switch myself. Uh, they continually impress me with their products. They feel like they're, they're really putting a lot of care into what they make and they have excellent customer service. You know, we live in a pretty awesome time when there are so many different tablet options for everyone from the hobbyist and beginner who doesn't have a lot of money to the, you know, pros out there that are you know, willing to spend huge chunks of money. It's really good to see something. This is a nice mid-range kind of a tablet for your more financially conscious artists out there. And, and uh, it's probably my favorite out of all the, the other tablets that I've used. It's good to have so many options. Now that doing digital art is such a glamorous job. I read an article that said it's one of the most glamorous jobs in the, in the world right now. If you want to pick one up, uh, follow that link in the text field below the video. Before you ask where you can get my brushes and tutorials, I've got all that over on my Gumroad channel, as well as some of the novels and comics that I've written over on Amazon. Don't forget to subscribe and do as I'll catch y'all. Manyan de bon. Ciao, baby. Oh, yeah. Summoning the spirit of Macho Man.